Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is Cleaning Validation, Part 2, Levels of Cleaning, a Detailed Approach. After the first step of understanding on macro calculations, this Part 2 will discuss on Levels of Cleaning. Several factors that are to be focused in detail will be discussed in this video. Since contamination of previous product is not accepted in the next product, the cleaning validation should discuss various levels of cleaning depending upon the criticality of the cleaning. Let us see how we develop the cleaning strategy. Cleaning levels depend on the criticality of the potential contamination in that particular operation. Let us understand this carefully. Level of cleaning totally depends on the criticality of the possible contamination in that particular area or equipment. Contamination is an unwanted, maybe toxic or other health hazard type of chemical or viable pathogens, etc in the next product. So obviously the levels of cleaning totally depend on these aspects. Let us see a simple daily life example. What is the procedure to clean a container to store milk in it that has already traces of milk in it and the other container which has traces of curd in it? Answer is simple. The container with the traces of curd in it needs more effort for cleaning than the one which has milk in it because traces of curd could spoil the fresh milk stored in it. This is called the criticality of cleaning procedure. All multi-purpose manufacturing plants manufacture several products using the same equipment train. By definition, multi-purpose means it is for many different products. So, change your cleaning from one product to the other is a must to avoid contamination of previous product in the next product. Obviously, more the number of products, more the number of change over cleanings. There could be several permutations and combinations for turning around several products. It may appear that the cleaning activity is more than the manufacturing activity. So, how do we address? The guideline prescribes to minimize the cleaning effort the concept of using different levels of cleaning as a function of the level of risk related with the possible carryover may be applied without affecting the safety of the API. The APIC guide active pharmaceutical ingredients committee which is a part of European Chemical Industry Council, prescribes that to minimize the cleaning effort, a risk-based approach may be adopted for different levels of cleaning with a main focus on the safety of the API manufactured in that particular equipment train. Let us discuss more on the levels of the cleaning in upcoming slides. Importance of risk management tools were discussed in several occasions in earlier videos. The point here is that it is absolute necessity to utilize the QRM tools as prescribed in ICHQ9 as a part of daily routine operation. Let us understand on the levels of cleaning. There are at least three different levels of cleaning recommended. The recommendation is at least. That means additional levels of cleaning may be necessary depending on the nature of the process requirements. This will be decided by the risk assessment report of the process. Characteristics such as solubility, recovery studies, nature of residues, process steps, etc. of previous product and subsequent product should be considered. Additional levels of cleaning should take into consideration the solubilities of the previous product and next product, nature of residues, etc. Recovery studies are also considered 
for taking decision for additional levels of cleaning. Recovery studies means how effectively and accurately the recovery of the residues can be determined from the equipment by analysis. The recovery should reflect the actual residue in the equipment. All these aspects should be focused in the risk assessment. Three levels are considered to address low risk, moderate risk and high risk. Basically, the recommendations are to address the low, moderate or high risk cleanings. There can be more levels depending on the cleaning criticality. Let us see this table and try to understand. Most critical level is 2 in this table. In this level, the previous product which needs to be cleaned is critical. This is a high risk cleaning. It is necessary to clean the equipment to achieve the tighter target limit. In the next column of cleaning verification, it is necessary to have visual inspection of the equipment done for obvious cleanliness. The traces of the previous product have to be established by analysis. The analytical method must be a validated procedure as per USP 1225. Also, the LOD and LOQ values must be predominantly established. The reason for this is that we estimate the traces of impurities which will be in milligram or nanogram level. LOD and LOQ values reflect the lowest amount of analyte for detection and quantitation. Unless these two parameters are established in detail, the analytical method validation has no meaning for this type of analysis. Cleaning validation is mandatory in this case. Cleaning validation should encompass all aspects of cleaning procedures, usage of detergents for each individual piece of equipment, verification at every stage of cleaning, swab limits, rinse limits, etc. Analytical method validation is in fact a part of cleaning validation. You should remember this point. Let us see level 1. This is less stringent when compared to level 2 cleaning. In this also, similar kind of approach should be adopted, but the target limit could be less stringent compared to the critical one. Cleaning validation is recommended in this case. But if adequate data to establish the achievement of the target values is not available, it may be necessary to carry out the validation in this case also. This case is considered as a strategy for moderate risk. The third level is a zero level. In this case, gross cleaning is adequate and it is the strategy for low risk. In this, obviously, visual inspection is necessary to establish obvious cleanliness. This is mostly used for very early stages of the process. The other reason for this strategy could be understood that there are several stages of transformations, purifications to get to the stage of the pure API. Let us understand this flowchart. You will get good information and understanding. On the left side of the chart, there are A3, A2, A1, crude API A, pure API A, and physical operations like drying, milling, sifting, etc. There is similar kind of list on the right side of the flowchart for product B. Let us see one case. When the equipment is cleaned from A3 stage to A2 stage, gross cleaning may be adequate. This is level 0 strategy. From A2 stage to A1 stage also same strategy is adopted. From A1 stage to crude API stage, the recommendation is level 0 or 1. 
because we are reaching the critical step where api basic molecule is formed as crude api so more careful cleaning is required really there is no big difference between level 1 and level 2 so this type of cleaning is required when approaching the crude stage many of the cases there will not be any chemical processes from crude api stage to the pure api stage it's only purification changeover for uh, physical operations also will have to be done as per level 0 or 1 did you notice that the cleaning of equipment from a2 to final api it is level 1 or 2 because the intermediate a2 is very early stage and the final product cannot afford to have a2 contamination same is the case with api b also let us see the cross cleaning of the equipment from a to b zero level gross cleaning may be acceptable for early stages of the intermediates but when it is approaching the crude api stage you have to follow level one or two strategy as told earlier there is no significant difference between level one and level two cleaning validation requirements have to be established and justified all others are same any variations to these recommendations may have to be scientifically justified and documented fully scientific justification can be done only by statistical risk assessment focusing on easiness of cleaning toxicological characteristics of the intermediates and its impurities maximum daily dosage and batch size of the next product solubility experience in cleaning the residues etc let us focus on cleaning validation a detailed protocol with acceptance criteria should be in place for cleaning validation the procedure adopted for a specific purpose that has to be executed with a certain timeline with all procedures and persons involved is called a protocol the difference between an sop and a protocol is that the sop is for routine operation day in and day out the protocol is also a procedure but very specific for a particular activity involving specific equipment and specific patches the cleaning procedures should be drafted for each piece of equipment in stepwise detail so that the operator's operation variability can be reduced the strategy on cleaning levels should be justified as discussed strategy for levels of cleaning should be justified using a risk assessment the flow chart in the previous slide may be used as a generic guide validation should consist of three successive runs three successive consecutive runs are a must for statistical evaluation if there are unacceptable results in any of the runs the cause of failure should be clearly identified as not related to the process or product if the if the cause could not be established sooner next set of three successive runs should be considered this type of provision should be included in the protocol cleaning validation scheme should include the analytical method validation also this is important unless the analytical methods are validated the results of rinse and swab samples are questionable as told above the lod and loq takes more focus in the analytical method validations these methods have to be validated before the cleaning validation activity dirty hold time should be one of the outcome of the cleaning validation you have to understand that dirty hold time is the time that an equipment could be left uncleaned after the process is completed the purpose is to establish the highest levels of potential impurities or degradants in the equipment when left in the equipment could degrade and generate higher levels of impurities and also to establish that the existing 
cleaning procedures can take care of that levels of impurities. Let us see the aspects of cleaning process design. The cleaning process should consider the types of residues, characteristics of the residues, and ease of cleaning. How do you decide on the cleaning method? If there is a sticky semi-solid type layer of residue left over in the equipment after the process, just a quick wash with the detergent may not be effective. The equipment may have to be soaked in the detergent for some more time to free the residue. Then routine cleaning may happen. In some cases, scraping of surface may be necessary. All these aspects should be considered while designing the cleaning method. The cleaning method should focus on the ease of solubility of the residue for effective removal. So solubility, time of soaking if required should be in the cleaning procedure. Cleaning procedure designed for CIP that is clean in place system should focus on the operation design of the equipment. In manual cleaning, visibility to naked eye is possible for cleaning. For CIP systems, fully or partly there is no visibility on the cleaning efficiency. So the mechanical design of the equipment should be considered while designing the cleaning procedure. Temperature of the cleaning detergent, flow rate, pressure for cleaning activity should also be considered for such CIP systems. So sometimes higher temperatures, higher flow rates or higher pressures may be required for cleaning the CIP equipment. The design should address all these parameters individually. Let us see some other important points to note. The entire design of the cleaning validation procedure should be qualified for its intended purpose. Whatever is discussed in the design of the cleaning procedure should be qualified for ensuring its intent. A qualification run may be performed at this stage. Cleaning process verification has to be done with a strategy to confirm that the cleaning process remains in control throughout the life cycle. Product life cycle means as long as the product is being manufactured at site. So cleaning process verification has to be carried out with a definite schedule. Verification activity may be done by review of the existing design for suitability. As discussed in several earlier occasions, statistical analysis will help to establish the consistency of the design which supports the suitability. Please note that there is a small difference between validation and verification activity. Validation is a full set of activity whereas verification is a limited validation focusing on some of the critical parameters. It is like a certification audit and surveillance audit. This terminology we are familiar for ISO audits. They audit full sections for certification audit and few important sections for surveillance audit. Post validation monitoring activity may be limited to simpler analytical techniques like TOC, conductivity, pH to establish the cleanliness of the equipment. Post validation monitoring may be made with faster and simpler techniques like TOC, conductivity or pH etc. for routine operation. However, visual inspection should be maintained in the cleaned equipment and dried equipment. Visual inspection should continue in all cases. The confirmation of the validation status should be performed periodically according to the periodicity defined in the validation report. The existing clearing validation system should be reviewed if 
there are any changes in the manufacturing process, equipment and or analytical methods. This is important. How do you do this? Is it required to do a revalidation to confirm? Not really. It speaks that the validation status should be confirmed that it is in the state of control. This can be achieved by collecting the entire data, evaluate statistically by means of CP, CPK values, X bar graphs, MR graphs, Six Sigma, etc. and confirm that the cleaning procedure is under state of control. This may be done once in two years, but the validation report should have a provision to do so. The VMP also, the validation master plan also can prescribe this requirement in detail. I hope that you understood the concept of levels of cleaning in this video. Read the guidance on aspects of cleaning validation in the active pharmaceutical ingredient plants of APIC. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.